Welcome to Backish, I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. So we're going to talk about Justice League, the totality. I recognize we didn't do Dark Knight's Metal or Justice League, no justice. <laughs> right. But Ethan's not here, and I was like, he has to be here for that, and I'm way more familiar with metal, and I know I know this story, but I could definitely use a refresher on it, so... Well, you read only some of the issues of I it. read we a little bit... some of it, and then we dropped I the book. I think I read, like, the first two issues. Amazing artists on this book. I remember when they announced it, they were like, Jim Chung's doing this book, and we were all like, yeah! He's moving from Marvel DC, I can't wait! Woo. And he did the first issue, and it was like, that's pretty cool, it looks really great. You know what, that's... Yep. That's what that would look like if Jim Chung drew the Justice League. But then, Jorge Jimenez showed up. And Jorge Jimenez had already made his bones doing some Superman work. So, a couple of us knew, this guy's awesome. But then he got to do Justice League. And it's like, oh my god, can you do this like all the time? So, this is an epic beginning to an epic run of Scott Snyder on Justice League. But it's not like chapter one, like we were all promised. Because they was like, listen, I'm going to bring back... The Justice League that everybody culturally remembers because a lot of DC fans kind of got their start in the more modern times through the Justice League Unlimited show, which was arguably one of the best distillations of Justice League, which of course is a derivative of the Batman animated yeah. series, which is another distillation of Batman, which is also supreme. Right. I, I always like the Justice League cartoon show more than Unlimited. I, see, I don't consider them different. <laughs> oh, that scene was okay. 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 The gloves are off. Throw. I was like. No, because Justice League, <laughs> great show. It, it stars the original seven. Yeah. And it's just about them. And then by season three, they're like, let's just put literally everybody Right, and I show. dig that because you got to meet more characters, but I yeah. felt like there was more character development when they have smaller casts because you could spend more time with them. Oh, too. yeah, no. You, well, they, they really do set up a great foundation for those, for, the, for those characters with the original, like, one or two seasons. Yeah. But then they can really explore those characters even deeper. And then you can, like, have a couple of episodes with, like, Shining Knight. <laughs> but yeah. also, don't forget that, like, Jean is deeply sad and Shaira has to make atonement for yeah. what she's done. A lot of neat stuff. Great show. And for a lot of people, like, that's Justice League. But, like, I loved Hawkgirl and yeah. Jon Stewart. I was like, oh, they're awesome. Yeah, I never saw this show. No, it, So it, good. You, you'd love it. It's a great show. He's not going to say you'd dig it the most because we're both sitting on the couch. Well, and I don't so think you would dig it the most. But, like, I think you would enjoy <laughs> it. It's a fallacy genuinely. you would not dig it the most, but <laughs> no. you would dig it. Yes. Yes. That, that's that it much It would be clear. dug by you. So, clearly, Snyder's like, I want to ape off of that. I'm going to bring in that team. And there's no reason not to. Like, there's, no, there's no reason, if you want to put a Green Lantern in the Justice League, to just get Jon Stewart. Because literally anybody who wants to write the Green Lantern book is just going to use Hal. So why shoehorn Hal onto the team? Hal Jordan! I know, well, that's that's uh, our good friend who loves Hal Jordan. But apparently now he's been kicked to the curb and Grant Morrison is all about Hal Jordan. So <laughs> lucky us. Uh, but that being said, uh, John the Stewart... Public's and his own. Oh. Yeah, John Stewart, perfect pick. He's great. He's, he's great. He's my favorite. Right. And of course, you also know that he's committed genocide so yeah but he's still he's my on the favorite team. yeah at the, at the baseline you're like okay this is going to springboard into like the the, the, the main story and it kind of is really more like chapter three of scott snyder's magnum opus yeah, this this book is like a soft opening yeah to like stuff you you're like okay yeah but you've already been like launching these guys for a bit that's now, the thing so. is that like over on justice league no justice which was a limited series in which a, a big expansive team that is made up of other characters including like Harley Quinn all have to fight the Omega Titans and deal with the seven wonders of the universe and crap the less said about it the better the point is Omega Titans? yeah yeah that happened yeah it's something he makes up for that yeah. now, and that's Ugh. actually a trend throughout Snyder's run is that like he'll just make shit up and then be like, oh no, the greatest universal threat of all time, this thing I made up has now arrived and they've all got to fight it. So that already happened. All you need to know for context of this is a couple things that happened in Dark Knight's Metal, which we will get to on this channel, but more important, the source wall, the thing that kept the end of the universe separate from the rest of the universe, yeah. has broken. What does that mean? It means that there's a hole in it, and anything that was behind that wall can now come into our universe. I'm sorry, why did it break? Is the well, you can't find that out. I'll, right I'll now. tell you later. The point is, it's broken. That's a story for another, for another time. time, then. It, it's true. Uh, I, I don't want to get it. And really, it's very arbitrary. Like, I was rereading Dark Knight's Metal, and it's just like, it broke! Like, as a consequence of us well, saving the day, the it also broke. You'll find it, it out. And the only reason why it broke is so that Snyder could do this. Like, it has almost nothing to do with Dark Knight's Metal because 
all he's doing is setting up the next thing. Yeah. And, and so the, and the next thing is like a, a Kirby esque yeah. Eternals like right. sort of feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So but that's so, the so the source wall is broken. Does that mean like shit's coming through? Yes. Are we able to go to the other side? We have not gone to the other side. But we might break on through to the other side. There is this like great energy that is blasting through not just the universe but also time. It's just it's coming out of the source wall and it's breaknecking through space. And so 85,000 years from now, the Just League of the Future, which is a Grant Morrison invention, they see this thing and it's blasting through space. But then 85,000 years ago, the Monitor from Crisis sees this thing flat blasting through. So it's this energy that's kind of like tearing through time it's and like, space. Someone better deal with that. Uh, yeah, well, whew, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, 5,000 years from now, we have Kamen D, the last boy on Earth, who's a Jack Kirby creation. We're not mm -hmm. going to get into him right now. Uh, he sees it and he's like, whoa. And then now, presently, some of these elders of the universe are the, seeing this come through. The village people. Yeah, including like Ganthet and the Phantom Stranger are seeing this and they're like, uh-oh. Everyone's like, well, someone else is going to deal with this. Right? Yeah, probably the Justice Well, League. it's not coming at us, so... <laughs> yeah, that's how I usually deal with my problems. <laughs> Ooh, a quarter. <laughs> so uh, we established that after the whole no justice thing, the Justice League builds the Hall of Justice, which of course is a holdover from anybody who's over 50. The Hall of Justice! Bingo looks just like it. Uh, and so the Hall of Justice is basically like the Justice League's attempt at kind of like normalizing their presence on Earth. You know, the Justice League have had watchtowers orbiting the Earth or have a, a whole base on the moon, very separate from humanity. You right. can't get there unless you have a freaking teleporting machine. Yeah. But now it's like a base. And not only that, it's also a museum. And so the public can come and go as they please. Oh, I was gonna ask that, that's awesome. Yeah. But there is something to be said about like conceptually, like, you know, like Keeping this is this... one location, whereas the watchtower was like, keep a watch over all of Earth. Yes, yes. Uh, well, and also let's say that like- <laughs> No, New York. <laughs> well, or let... Metropolis, It's I guess? DC. Yeah, it's DC, Washington DC. Yeah. But like, let's say that a big villain wanted to attack them. Now they're in the middle of a major metropolitan area as opposed to like the moon. No, so you've really kind of made it harder for This is a good plan, and there will be no problems associated None with it. None whatsoever. So the, the Hall of Justice is kind of like a museum, and they've got like all these neat little like costu old costumes of the heroes. It's very much like a fun like Liberty Science Center exhibit. Yeah, it's the old like hog girl costume, which I like. Yeah, the show. well, there's a lot of like who's who and what's what. They also have yeah. old like weapons that they've confiscated from villains, but like they've taken the firing pins out and stuff like that. Like basically they've made them so that they're just trophies mm -hmm. that you can look at. And they assured everybody. Okay, Zorg. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, fun. Remember we did um, Justice League Dark? Yeah, yeah. That's where their base is. It's in the basement. Of, yeah, of Justice this. League Dark is in the basement. They're of the like Hall of way down there. What? And they have a lot of magical weapons which do not have their firing pins removed. Yeah, no, they just keep them there because they want to use. But nobody them. can go down there. But Wonder Woman can just take the elevator. So she's cool. <laughs> she was like, "Nah, this is fine." Boop. Security clearance. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool. Don't worry. I got this. We got dragon bones down here. <laughs> right. But, but you know. The, Have the, you ever stored a dragon bone? It is the best rush. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it gives you wings. <laughs> and fire breath. So they, they talk about secret doors that are in the Hall of Justice and how they're really, like, the public only knows about none of them, really. And you know, the, the whole point is that there's a visual of a doorknob that opens a doorway that Lex Luthor has possession of, and on the doorknob is this, like, sigil, this, this image that yeah. means something. It looks like a steaming warm bun. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this image is actually yep. the equivalent, it's Martian, and it's the equivalent of the word that the Martians would have had for justice. The Martians did not have a word for justice, but the equivalent thereof would be this, like, image. Are you talking like Jean's yes, Martians? Yes, Jean's Martians. Okay. It, this is this is Green like Martians. Gandalf and the Dwarven Door to Moria. Yeah, <laughs> except he could like take the knob off and then use it on any surface and it would become a door. See, that's awesome. Yes, uh, but the Justice League doesn't use that door because like they're dumbasses. Uh, so the Justice League is embroiled in a major kerfuffle, if you will. They're battling against Pro magnum type people who are agents of Vandal Savage, who is, of course, the oldest man living. Vandal Savage is an ancient yeah. villain who uh, you know, ate some, like, meteorite and gained strength and immortality. And so he's been Those pro-magnum men wouldn't eat anything. Well, that's the thing is that, yeah, they will. Like, if it's, like, shiny or whatever, they'll put it in their mouths. But, like, he, uh, he did that, and as he's been, like, living throughout the ages, he's built up 
you know, like armies and shit. Mm -hmm. and there's like this society or a number of societies that he's built from those times and they like live underground and stuff. So it doesn't matter where they come from. The point is that like they're giving the Justice League a hard time and the right. Justice League is all coordinated and we get this big Jim Chung splash of every member of the Justice League and them dealing with Doing these problems. Including Batman and his bat head lamp. Yes, well he's, you know, he's, he's underground. And so each of them does their own Batman voice, where they're like, I know how to lift rocks, Sean, I live in a damn cave. And, uh, and Batman's like, I don't sound like that. And they all kind of do their own voices, uh, making fun of Batman. Mm -hmm. But they all agree that Clark does the best impression of Batman, which he is too magnanimous to do right now. Guys, guys, come on. We don't have to, we don't have to say these out loud. Yeah, come on, don't tell Bruce that I make fun of him when he's not here. Oh, sure, he's Superman. He can do everything super, yeah. including a In super impression of Batman. I mean, like, the fact is, they're, <laughs> they're friends. They're friends. They're yeah. the closest members of the team. We he would have a voice. Alfred. Has a pretty damn good impression. <laughs> no yeah, doubt. because sometimes he's just a step in for Batman. Yeah. But I will say that Wonder Woman says, after all, I'm the goddamn Wonder Woman. <laughs> in her Batman voice, I think is really funny. It's pretty good. And Vandal Savage is set up in his throne room in the Legion of Doom headquarters, which looks exactly like the headquarters of Legion of Doom from the original Super Friends cartoon show. Mm. Lol. Uh, so he's having a good time because he is about to put together a new Injustice gang. What? Why Why was he trying to pull the Earth's crust off? If you want to know what his plan was, he literally just says, that was phase one of my plan. So he has no plan? Clearly. Okay. No. His but plan is to, to suck and die in that order. Uh, because as he's talking about planning his Injustice gang, like forming together a team, Lex Luthor shows up in a power suit. And you're kind of like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. But wasn't Lex Luthor wearing like a Superman suit? And wasn't he trying to do good? Yeah. Yeah. Snyder doesn't want to do that. So out the window it goes. All that character development, all that progression for Lex Luthor, gone. Throw it out. It's over. Forget no, about it. No, I do that. I do that when I'm trying to do good. Well, no, it's I did that. But now I'm doing this. Yeah, I tried that for classic, a little bit. Yeah. I moonlighted as a hero, but now I'm back to being Lex Luthor, the one that Snyder wants to write about. Now, that being said, he does explain why Luthor decides to stop being a hero, but, you know, when you're first reading it, you're like, wait, what? Luthor basically just, like, shoots Vandal Savage with a ray gun and, uh, and then proceeds to explain his nefarious scheme. We have to turn the page, and so he's off the screen, so we can't know what that scheme is, but we will later on. It's a shame the uh, Justice League can't do anything like that. Oh, I shot him with a ray gun. There, it's over. There, it's Problem over. solved. Well, it doesn't kill Vandal Savage, and in fact, very few things can, but Luther has something that, that, that can and in fact will. Uh, so, Jean is plagued with vivid memories of his recollection of being on Mars back in the day. Uh, you know, his family is basically burned to death, including his child, and he's, he's very sad about it. So, because that's what Jean does. He... Well, otherwise, he would just be green Superman, and we need to make him much more sad. Yeah. yeah he's... Much sadder than Superman would be. Uh, so, Jean is yeah, like... I, I know you lost your whole race. I also lost my whole race. But I got to watch them die, too. I, I got to watch them die, and, like, I'm not really accepted by the people here. I could be. Right, I could, I could literally change my... If I just changed my shape, but, you see, but, you. but also, why should I? You don't have but to like, change anything. He is, and he isn't, like, green Superman, because it's, like... Superman's weak against like kryptonite and magic. Both are kind of more difficult to come across. Oh yeah, across. no, that's the idea. That's how that's how we scale back Martian Manhunter. Otherwise, we would just have great right. Superman. Right, Sean's like an issue is fire. Anyone has that. Literally, everybody is weak to that. <laughs> uh, could you pull out that cigarette? Um, that little end at the. Uh... It's making me a little twitchy. <laughs> I don't care for that. It will kill me. And so he creates a kind of like a, a plane of existence in their shared collective consciousness where they feel like they can like sit down and hang out at the table. At the table with the sigil on it. Yeah, because that's the image that Jean has produced that means justice, or the closest thing to justice. It is coincidentally also the shape of the Hall of Justice. It is. It's also, well, clearly they built it like that. Right. Like, they started with the image and then they went from there. But uh, Jean brings everyone's attention to the energy thing that was shooting through the sky, and he's like, this thing came out of the source wall and... I'm calling it a totality. It's like, uh, it's an energy core. And it could it could do anything or unmake everything. And we need to know what to do about it. Like, what should we do about it? So the beginning of the book had nothing to do with where the book is going. No. 
Well, the beginning of the book was the totality. You mean the fight? Yeah, the fight. The fight is context to show that the team works together well and can overcome an obstacle. Is, also, it's fun to look at. Is somehow Lex Luthor or uh, Savage, Vandal Savage, Vandal yeah. Savage involved in the totality? Absolutely. No, no, no. Lex Luthor is all consumed with the totality. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all coming together. So, the League basically debates for no reason about what to do about this totality. Like, do we go deal with it? Do we try to destroy it? What are we going to do? Also, we've heard from the Omega Titans in Justice League No Justice that the multiverse is dying. And so we need to do something about that. But, like, one of us is dressed like a bat, and the other one can get killed by a cigarette butt. So <laughs> I'm thinking we probably couldn't do anything about the multiverse, so let's just ignore it for a while. Luther is talking to Savage. He's monologuing at him because he shot him with a ray gun that, like, kind of freezes him in place. Yeah. An element of the still force, which is the opposite of the speed force, which is operated by a villain known as the Turtle, or Turtle Man, depending on what continuity you're in. Uh, but anyway, as he's shot by this still force, that is really weird and annoying. I know, uh, but it's the very still force. It's very important to the story. Why I'll, would mm, I know. because it's going to stop the totality? No, 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 no. No, it's just it's just one of the essential forces of the universe, and you need to deal with it. Uh, but anyway, Vandal's like frozen there, and yeah. Savage's minions are like, "Oh, we will follow you. Like we're in." And Luther's like, mm, "Let me think about it," and he just pushes the button and drops the floor off from under them. Yeah, that's and the like, right move. No. Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Pass. I'm good. Also, your loyalty is really, really, t like, strong. Yeah. I froze your boss for 10 seconds. And you immediately turned on him. Yeah, that doesn't give me an, a lot of whole uh, inspiring confidence in you. No, get out. Also, you're gross looking. Meh, drop. Uh, because the whole thing is that, like, Vandal Savage has designed and built the Legion of Doom headquarters mm -hmm. for his Injustice gang, but it turns out that, like, actually Luther invented it, and he designed it, and he manipulated Vandal Savage into building it. So Vandal Savage thinks that he's got his, like, headquarters, but actually he wound up building Lex Luthor's headquarters for him, and so Luther's now here to, like, take it. And so he's talking about the totality and how, like, Vandal Savage knows what it is, he's seen it before, and he fears it. And Luther's like, you see, the problem is, I don't. And you wanted a gang, but really what we needed was a legion. And so then he teleports in his Legion of Doom. Right, which is about the same size as a gang. Yes, uh, but this is the Legion of Doom. Okay. A uh, little more extreme than the Injustice gang. Also, the team is actually more substantial. It's a bunch of heavy hitters. You got Sinestro and Cheetah and Black Manta, Gorilla Grodd, and the Joker. Has the Joker ever been on the Legion of Doom before? Yeah. And is Not this the one from Super Friends. Okay. The Super Friends one had Scarecrow. Because, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. Is this during the time period, though, if I'm correct, where there's, like, how many Jokers possibly there around? They have already like, said there are three Jokers. Right. And so, like, this was, everyone's like, but which Joker is this? And it's like, it's the Joker. It's the, they haven't used any other Jokers. Yeah. Like, the only Joker, the Joker that Scott Snyder uses throughout his run is the same Joker throughout. And the fact is, the bigwigs at DC don't care about or listen to anything that Jeff Johns wrote or cares about. Right, so, so. Three Jokers, F you. Actually, there's just one, and it's the one I've been using since I started. Bite me. So the Legion of Doom has now been formed, thanks to Lex Luthor. Uh, Lex Luthor just uses his nefarious villainy as a context machine to explain to the reader what's going on by monologuing in Vandal Savage, and we're indicating, I don't think Savage is joining the Legion of Doom. Right. No. Uh, he also. But they are going to be outnumbered if they do this. That's Six true. to seven. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but they do have one more member. It's not really a member, but it's more like they have they they have an ace in the hole that's chained in the basement. And Vandal Savage is like, we don't have a basement. Ah, what little you know, Vandal Savage. Actually, we do. Uh, Vandal, I just hit a button and opened the floor up, and your millions got swallowed. We have a basement. <laughs> Where do you think they went? They right. didn't go up. <laughs> So uh, then uh, Lex Luthor pulls out a doorknob and he beats Vandal Savage to death with it. Vandal Savage gets taken out by a doorknob? Yeah. Well, I mean, really, it's the concussive force from the doorknob. True. And the doorknob <laughs> also... Uh, has some value as some well. Some value as well. <laughs> okay. But this is the doorknob that has that sigil on it you're talking about. This doorknob has a different sigil. This sigil is the inverse of the Martian language for justice. Which, which means chaos. Means doom. Yeah, they're the Legion of Doom, Ben, not the Legion of Chaos. But th that's not the opposite of justice. It is, actually. According to this. The team is scrambled. 
to go intercept the totality. And this is when Jean has a vision from Vandal Savage, who, who kind of reaches out psychically before he dies. And uh, he sees like all the possibilities and the truth behind the totality. And he uh, is, is awed and horrified by the sight of this, this great power behind the totality and behind the source wall. And so he realizes that like actually the totality spells doom and he tries to call back the team, but they've already sprung into action. And so, oops, I guess it's gonna hit earth. So it does. So the totality reaches earth, it lands. And so now they're gonna have to deal with it. Like basically Jean's like, we should have destroyed it. Right, deal with it. Yeah. So then we're like, hey, what happened to Lex Luthor? Why, why was Lex Luthor such a dick? So uh, Lex Luthor was already being a dick when he accidentally got a letter that was an invitation to the Legionnaires Hall that his father was a member of back in Kansas. Uh, Lex Luthor and his father had a very, very miserable relationship. Uh, his father was actually very abusive towards him, so Lex right. really, really hates and resents his father. Uh, so naturally, when Lex gets an invitation to the place that his father would have rather been than at home being a good father, uh, Lex goes. And he meets up with all these old veterans at this like little rinky-dink legionnaire hall in the middle of Kansas. And he's like, hey everybody! So, and he explains everything to them. Mm -hmm. And he says, but uh, so I thought it'd be really fun to buy this building. So I bought it and I loaded it with explosives before you all got here. So get out or I'm gonna kill all of you. And they're like, what? Cause like they're all in their 80s and they're just, what? And they're like, you can't be serious. And he goes, oh no I am. And he pushes a button on his like actual regular looking suit and it creates this kind of like bomb proof futuristic shielding and they all just run away and so they're all running out the main door and he goes gentlemen wouldn't you want to take the door to your left and they're like what is he talking about there's no door to our left and luther realizes that there is a door and he didn't see it before mm -hmm. and when he notices it it's a glowing door and it's got a special doorknob and when he takes the doorknob it spells doom and it's got the image on it and that's where he gets the doorknob from so john stewart is involved in a prison transfer he's out like in space, mm -hmm. delivering some bad guy for the Guardians. And it's a super secret top covert mission, so no one's allowed to know what's going on. Uh, there is some flora aboard, so uh, Batman encourages Swamp Thing to use it to communicate with, with, with John. And, you know, John's unappreciative of it because he's like, hey, I'm a military guy, chain of command, you're not supposed to be just calling me using mental Swamp Things, that's bullshit. <laughs> and Batman's like, yeah, I don't care about that. Listen, join the Justice League. It's time. Mm -hmm. You should join the Justice League. Just come on. And John's like, no. I got, I got shit to do. And Batman's like, well, you really should. Because, like, the totality landed on Earth, and it's, it's, it looks like a giant horrible head, and it's transforming things that walk into the, like, aura that is around it into big monsters. Like, uh, Killer Croc jumped into it, and it turned him into a giant dinosaur monster. So we're dealing with that. That's pretty cool, though. It is pretty cool. <laughs> And it's drawn by Jorge Jimenez, so it looks pretty dope, too. And Superman's just going to go punch it in the face, but it breathes this green fumes onto Superman, and it's kryptonite fumes. How? Because it can evolve. The, the totality basically evolves or devolves you, whoever walks into it, into whatever it is the totality wants you to be. So it, it, it evolved to match with Superman. So it's like, it's unpredictable. Oh, no. Right. Also, then Superman can't solve the problem. Uh, so, so the totality is just a hand wavy bullshit of like, oh, anything can be anything now. Well, only be only right now. Like the totality is just like it's it's energy source that can be used to ruin or fix everything. So, what would happen if the Justice League entered well, the aura? We don't know, and so they are doing their best not to do that. They will eventually enter the totality, but they're going to try and like create a barrier uh, between you know, the, the, the air inside and themselves so that they don't, like, get changed. Because, like, what if they get changed into, you know, an animal... Horrible monster. Or a horrible monster. They can't think and process what they need to do with the totality. So okay. they're going to deal with that later. Uh, anyway, uh, so Luther moves the Legion of Doom into the Legion of Doom headquarters, and he explains, you know, I got this doorknob, and you're all here, and they're like, why would we even help you? Like, what are we even doing here? <laughs> so Luther explains... Because I have a baby. Well, because I have this baby. And the baby is the turtle. Uh, the turtle we've established is an old Flash villain from the Golden Age. Uh, he is usually portrayed as a really, really old man. Mm -hmm. But uh, everyone knows that babies and old men kind of look similar. No, it's just that the, it, he, he was changed and now he's a baby. And so Grodd takes the baby and he can use the baby uh, 
to manipulate the Still Force. Right. And Grodd also wants to do this because the Still Force is a great way to fight Flash, and Grodd hates Flash because he's a Flash villain. Yeah. And he's like, and Manta, he does need a change, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, so get to work. That's your job. Right. Because you're Yeah, black you've got that giant mask on, that <laughs> helmet thing. It probably protects you from the smell, right? I mean, certainly it's got its own air supply. Or water supply? No, it's air. Yeah, it's air. He He's not... I made him into our, our joke yes. in yeah. my head. No, that's not... Black Manta it's is... It's not Manta Ray. Manta Ray <laughs> is Black Manta's, like, half-cousin who runs a car dealership. Yeah. I'm or a boat see. dealership? Come on down. Like, what? Does they, everyone else get a door prize, too? They dress up the baby like Luther because they basically look the same. Yes. Luther does look like a giant baby. <laughs> Other than the fact that the baby has a little bit of hair. <laughs> Even the baby has more hair than Lex Luthor. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, also Hawkgirl's on the team. Hawkgirl is Ken is Kendra Saunders, yeah. who was the I don't know thousandth reincarnation of Hawkgirl. Hawkgirl's whole thing is that because she touched Ed's metal or was stabbed by it, she can like live forever be- through through reincarnation. And uh, she was a Black Hawk, a covert Black Ops member of this squadron, uh, and. Through Dark Knight's metal, she ends up becoming Hawkgirl again, and she joins the team. That's all you need to know, is that Hawkgirl's on the team. But she's not the Hawkgirl that you might know from the Justice League cartoon show. That's Shiera Hall, and yeah. Shiera is Thanagarian, and she is actually on Thanagar right now! Yeah. Two totally different characters. So she's not a Thanagarian? She is not. No. She's a person. What's with the wings, then? The wings are Nth Metal, and they came from her experience in Dark Knight's metal. Okay. So Flash helps them build a car that can drive into the Speed Force so that other characters can use the Speed Force besides him. The fact was, everyone was tired of being on the treadmill. The treadmill is stupid. I'm not looking to work out no. to go into the Speed Force. Uh, Jean is like, we gotta move, we gotta get into this totality, we gotta deal with it right now. Um, and Barry, you need to stay here because we don't want you to get killed or de-evolved or ruined because you're the only one who can like change shit and go through time and use the speed force Mm -hmm. so like stay here uh so batman is like yeah and he's communicating through like a like a video phone he's like yeah we gotta go and they're like uh batman where are you right now and he's like well thanks to dr ray palmer i'm super tiny and i'm actually in superman's bloodstream right now because that's how i'm gonna enter the totality superman's gonna wear a suit now i'm gonna enter the totality by being (laughs) in superman's body I know this is like the plan. I like to think that was just Batman's plan. Like everybody had to figure out how to get into the totality. And he was like, ha ha! I know, I'll shrink and go into (laughs) Superman's bloodstream and hang out there. (laughs) Because when he turns into a giant monster, I'm gonna attack him from the inside. That's the plan. Yeah. Pew pew pew. Son of a bitch. Yeah, that's that's why they're gonna shrink down Kendra and stick her in Jean. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the plan. I'm sorry. So anyway, uh, as John is dealing, so John's coming back from his uh, prisoner transfer, and he bumps into Sinestro, who is now a new Lantern. Now, Sinestro has been a Green Lantern. He has been a member of the Sinestro Corps. In fact, the leader of the Sinestro Corps. Uh, that was his corps. That was, was his, his corps. Color. Yellow Lanterns. Uh, now, he is the leader of the Ultraviolet Spectrum Corps. The ultra- no, no. Yeah, the that ultraviolet- is not a visual Spectrum Corps. That no, doesn't- you can't see it. So why would he be it? Because it, we could we just Scott Snyder invented it. Why for is the story. It, you didn't see it coming? Why is Bingo. it? Why is he infrared then? That, maybe that's a thing. We'll get there later. But right now, ultraviolet. So Sinestro is the leader of the ultraviolet spectrum. Which, More like ultraviolet. Wow. Sinestro discovered it when he was Thal, and he was like an archaeologist, and he kind of like bottled it away he didn't want anybody to like find it and use it because back then he was a good guy or at the very least he had the presupposition of being a good guy and uh luther's like no no no, actually if you use it you can manipulate the emotional spectrum of you know of people and so sinestro is now wielding the ultraviolet core and he uses it to corrupt and enlist john stewart so now john stewart is an ultraviolet lantern and he unleashes Jon Stewart on the Justice League that isn't entering the totality. So Superman and Jean get into their cool-looking Superman and Martian Manhunter, respectively, suits, and they go and enter the totality. Because ah. this scene is a gigantic head. Of some decrepit alien who is dead. Each chapter, by the way, after this, was punctuated by like a flashback that explains like the origins of those characters and what... Lex Luthor uses to manipulate them into joining his team. So Jean and Clark are fighting 
animals that accidentally drifted into the totality and have become like giant mindless beasts. Nice. Uh, meanwhile, you know, they're, they're not wearing their bubble suits. No, they, they were, but these monsters are strong and stuff, so they've torn them. So now uh, Kendra and Batman are fighting the totality I infection on a microscopic level in their awesome, you know, journey See, to the center of the earth. This is where boats. I, I kind of have a problem because it's like they can't be everywhere at once. It's not like the infection would just be in the one area. No, it is. I don't think that's how that makes no sense. The league kicks the crap out of John and then like helps him get better, and he's like, "Oh, hey, sorry." Sorry, I was taken over by a different lantern. A yeah. lantern we've never seen. Well, we've seen Sinestro. Right, and like, obviously when he showed up and he was a different, like, you know, oh, they spectrum knew. color, they're like, okay. Exactly. This isn't normal. That's mm -hmm. not green. Yeah. So, uh, he... He showed up. Did he do damage? Like, what was he doing? Because it says that the ultraviolet plays off, like, it can manipulate the emotions of people. Yes, and that's how Sinestro was able to corrupt John because John feels great horrible shame and fear because of the time when he let Zanshi die. He, uh, that he whole used, planet. Um, he used like, you know, eighth grade girl level emotional tactics. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It was real bad. <laughs> wow, Wonder Woman, you're looking pretty good considering, you know, all of that. I like how you just wear anything. That's yeah. so bold. Yeah. I love how you wear that skirt and you don't even care. About what? Nothing. Oh, what? <laughs> and flesh. <laughs> yeah. What about me? What about you? No, you, it's it's great. Lex Luthor is like cackling to himself because all of this is part of his grand design. He he's way too. He's more than ten steps ahead of these guys. So when Savage said like this is step one, mm -hmm. he's like, nah, uh, you don't know what step one even is. <laughs> I have the steps. One was like six months ago. <laughs> So John explains to the rest of the league that like Sinestro's roped up in this. There's ultraviolet core. They're dealing ultraviolet core. It is ultraviolet. <laughs> he got you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You accepted me. But uh, and there's also this still force that they have to deal with. And so uh, the teams basically pair off, and uh, Flash, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman go under the sea. And so then it's revealed that Hawk Girl is doing her thing inside of Marsh Manor's body, and behind her is the Joker with a chainsaw. And so Luther snuck Joker aboard Kendra's ship to sabotage the Jean plan. Did he use the doorknob? I don't understand right? how they don't, they that- Exactly. They don't show you, but like that my assumption no is they use the doorknob. But uh, Luther is aboard Batman's ship as well. Or at the very least, no, Luther is in his own ship in Superman's body. That I believe. I right. love that Luther was smart enough that he's like, I can't put the Joker with Batman. No. It's he, gonna... will, he will get distracted. <laughs> he won't be able to follow the plan because he'll be like, oh, I know. I'll just throw a pie in his face. Right. And it'll explode or something. I don't yeah, know. No. And the um, pie is just a pie. And the pie Enjoy is. it. <laughs> Joker has this like rusty, horrible chainsaw. And you're like, oh, no. He's going to cut off her wings. And she says something like, my wings are made of end metal, you maniac. What do you think you're going to do? And he's like, oh, this, this chainsaw's not for your wings. It's for your head. <laughs> yeah. That's not made of metal, is it? There's, <laughs> there's a lot of exposed flesh here, yeah, is what I'm saying. Exactly. I'm like, oh, that's, can yeah, she, Can she call. cocoon herself in her wings? I don't remember. No. She should be she able to. She can create like a sonic Whoop. ball. <laughs> like, or like a, like a grain of rice. Yeah. <laughs> Over on the moon, we got Cyborg and John. And, and whalers. No. Click. But they're dealing with the, the former base of the Watchtower because they know that, like, Sinestro's dealing up there. And uh, they also established that, like, there's I'm Sorry, a... do you mean to tell me they sent both black guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to the moon. To the moon. Get yeah. out of here. Get off the planet. I mean, you know, Jon Stewart, spacefaring, and Cyborg. Cyborg He's going to interface with tech. It yeah. makes sense. You need that. And also, like, you're on the moon. You probably don't need to breathe. Right. You're a cyborg, it's fine. Plus, Sinestro is going to be dealing with space stuff anyway, so yeah. it has to be John. Um, but uh, Snyder likes to make up a lot of crap. And uh, in this, like, he makes up the ultraviolet spectrum. Mm -hmm. And he makes up the entity that is, like, the avatar. You know, like, there's Parallax, and then there's, like, Ion for the, for the Green Lanterns. Well, there's Umbrax 
for the ultraviolet spectrum. And Umbrax is this entity, and it essentially, through Sinestro, coerce or corrupt different planets in the solar system to join the ultraviolet spectrum the way, like, Mogo, a living planet, is part of the Green mm -hmm. Lantern spectrum. Yeah. And he, the point is that Earth might succumb to becoming a, like, ultraviolet lantern itself. Right. And so they got to figure out that. Like, the, the, Luther's figured out every way to defeat the Justice League by making it completely weird and complicated. Which, by the way, if, if you're reading this for the first time, like Ben's just hearing about this, it's like, oh, the Earth is in peril. The Earth is in peril like, in the last non -stop. story and the story before that. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah, like literally the Earth is going to be destroyed but, three different times in the span of less than a year. But also like, why couldn't it just be the totality? We also have to have Umbrax in this? Yeah, and the Still Force. And the Still, like, Oh my god, you're throwing way too much at the readers. Yeah, and 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 this is like it's it's actually kind of amazing because like for the most part in modern comic book telling, decompression is is king. Like you you got you got what? Like uh you got a full story in there? Can you stretch it out into into six? You, know, you got an issue with the book? Can you make it three? Snyder will be like, "Well, you got like six issues? Can you cram it into two? <laughs> but he has a hundred issues in his head. So it's like it's just nonstop. Sometimes it seems like he's like, no, but I want to be the one who came up with this, so I'll put it in here. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I want I to invented get, this. I like Umbrax. I like the Elder Rivals. That's going in there. Like, I don't have to wait. Like, and you can do that in chapter two, but no, right now. Totality, Umbrax, Still all of Force, it. all I'll of it. I'll just split up the team. Yeah. Yeah, then they'll all do that. And then when, like, the small teams defeat their own individual component, mm -hmm. it'll be really weird when it requires the entire team later on to defeat one of them. Right. Yeah. Well, then that's where we are. So... Uh, Batman's whole ship is under siege and he can't like stop it and the ship is destroyed so he like he, he abandons ship and just like goes out into Superman's body with no like protection or suit of any kind I can is, breathe between I can breathe between the, the blood and like plasm that's in there no. no the point is he gets he gets eaten by one of the like microbes that is of the totality and uh, and 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 Luther's like nice. So but that was Batman's plan the whole time. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so Batman is seemingly eaten by the totality spores. Uh, John faces off against Sinestro, and Sinestro uh, basically uses the ultraviolet spectrum power to infect John's ring and destroy it, and he and he becomes an ultraviolet lantern again. And Sinestro goes. I've corrupted your ring and your mind. You are mine now, and you can never become a Green Lantern again. Even if you defeat me and everything goes back to normal, you can never become a Green Lantern again. You are out of the core because no. I because I've infected you. So so that's so get used to that. Well, it's okay. You just string Batman down. He'll go in there. And he'll right. He'll fight all the all the microbes. <laughs> no, it's actually way less complicated than that. But he defeats him, and like as you can see, it's yeah. fun because it, like it blows up his ring, and then like. There it replaces is no, it with a non-ring. There is no ring. Yeah, it's like a tattoo or like a, a or like a projection of a ring. Um, so you see, it was hidden there the whole time. You needed the ultraviolet light to see it. Ooh. Yeah, uh, that's kind of what they're implying, but no. So Sean and Superman kind of like take five, and John needs to explain to Superman like what's going on. He says like, "Listen, the reason why I wasn't in DC Comics for a while after the New Fifty Two and after both of my books were canceled, is because I was out in space uh, solving mysteries. And one of those mysteries was that I found this like ancient place where all of Martian information has been stored within one entity, one, one Martian entity. And it's this place called the Keep. And I talked to its keeper, which is this like super old Martian. And I begged them for information um, because like the Keep was buried within Thanagar Prime, which was the Thanagarian planet, which we hadn't seen for a while, and the reason is because the Thanagarians kept it secret and invisible, and it's revealed in Dark Knight's Metal that it was there the whole time, but it doesn't matter. The point is, like, and Superman is like, Jean, I know what you're thinking. You're, you're thinking this is all your fault. And the fact is, it is. And you're gonna pay. And Jean's like, what? And Superman's smile changes, and it looks like Lex Luthor, because Lex Luthor 
has gone into Superman's brain and he is now manipulating it using his ship. And so Lex Luthor is puppeteering Superman. Yep. Oh my he God. Was pretending to be Superman and yeah. like being a superhero too. To literally taking over Superman's body uh -huh. and then like driving it so that it can go into the totality and get his information and grab the totality and take it for himself because he knows that like once he gets it, you know, he'll, he'll have total there. control. This is, this is my plan the whole time. Oh, that's one part of his plan. It's still going. It's still plans. Uh, meanwhile, Joker's doing the same thing. Steps. Joker's doing the same thing in John's body. You know, and Joker's like, okay, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in John's brain. I, I beat up Kendra and I didn't cut off her head, but I still defeated her. And that's enough for me because obviously we're not going to kill Hawkgirl in the story. I brought the chainsaw. It's it's a red herring. I mean, I guess that is like in keeping with Joker's humor occasionally where he's like, oh, you thought I was going to kill you with that, so I'm not. Ha, 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 ha. Sure. I don't do the obvious thing, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. So Sinestro uses the ultraviolet spectrum to try and like communicate with and subsequently manipulate all the minds on Earth because everybody feels like shame and regret and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. can, that's enough to use the entity of Umbrax and the ultraviolet spectrum to basically turn all of humanity into ultraviolet lanterns. Uh, over on, under, under the sea, uh, Grodd slash Turtle are using the still force on Barry, and the harder that Barry struggles, the slower he is, and the less effective he becomes. And uh, actually... It's like Ooblex. What? It's like... Ooblex. I don't know what that is. That's stuff, that goop stuff that you make, you know, when you push on it really, really hard, it's like, oh. it's solid, and then, yeah, but if you're like, you're slow with it, it's like, oh, you can actually... You can actually meld it and move it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the still force is connected to the speed force in as much as when Barry's hit by the still force, the more he tries to use the speed force, the more powerful the still force becomes. And so... Grodd and Turtle are using the Still Force and the amplified power of Barry's use of the Speed Force and its amplification of the Still Force to assist in the manipulation and slowness of the Earth so that Sinestro can use the Ultraviolet Lanterns to basically try and take over the Earth. And that's that allows Sinestro to use his influence to, to thrall countless civilizations and so they're all here and they're all going to take over the earth or try to pull the earth into its ranks or destroy it. You know, oh, look, and there were all those lanterns that were also out there that are now ultraviolet lanterns. Yes. That's an evil baby. Yeah, that's one <laughs> evil baby. <laughs> yeah, all you had to do was, you know, get, use a little bit of power and now it's an evil baby. Well, yeah. It was cute before. Yeah, but now. Uh -oh. Scary. So then Luther and Joker, or Superman and John, uh, enter the totality. Like, they get through the, the, the wastelands and the source wall right. constructs. It's so interesting that he trusts Joker enough to do this. I like, know. it's just so, like, for me, that's like, the Joker would be like, no, right at the end, like, I'm not doing this. I think that's why Luther took over Superman's body, because he's like, if you try anything, I will, I will incinerate you. Yeah, I can use yeah, my heat I'll set on you on fire. Uh -huh. I'm sure he said something like that. I think it's more like he wanted Superman's body because he hates Superman. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Um, so then, evil is about to take the totality. So let's take, let's pump the brakes and actually explain why Luther is such a dick. Now? Yeah. Now you're going to do now that. Now we're going to do that. Thanks, Doug Mankey, for drawing that story. Luther invents time travel and he goes a million years in the future and when he gets there he finds out that he is worshipped like unto a god and the world itself is populated by super people it's kind of like I guess the inevitability of like a world where there are you know super people who are born or made made by this that like literally everybody, everybody will become like that it's like it's what syndrome uh, was talking about yeah when everyone's super nobody is <laughs> Uh, so Luther gets to the future and like everyone is like crazy and the world itself is kind of like messed up and evil and everyone's just fighting and it's just, it's just utter chaos. There's a future Joker. Yeah, that's right. And uh, when Luther arrives, he meets up with some random people, including future Joker and this other person. Is, is that one of the Jokers? Yeah, no, it's not one of the three <laughs> Jokers. Uh, but he's like, hey, you're Lex Luthor. And he's like, how do you know who I am? I'm a million years in the future. He goes, because we worship you. You're the guy who figures it out. You, you unlock everything. And he's like, what do you mean? And he's like, you find out that the world is random and unfeeling and that doom is the true course of the universe. That doom is the truth. And we it takes us a while to learn it, but we do. And so then we worship you. 
And like then when we embraced doom and we all kind of like turned that into our religion, we then took over and destroyed the universe in your name. And Luther's like, oh. Oh, I am a bad guy. Right. <laughs> and I'm supposed to be a bad guy because everything sucks. Like, <laughs> I embraced him. And the only thing that's really my... And, and his new motivation is, I do eventually win. Like, I take over the universe, I destroy the universe, I embrace, I embrace doom, or at least, like, my religion becomes that which everything that is sentient believes in. But I'm dead before we get to worship and enjoy it. So I gotta, I gotta turn back the clock a little bit. I gotta advance my plan. Gotta fast track I gotta this. fast track this shit so that I can take over the universe. It's not that the universe is taking over in my name. You invented time travel. Just live <laughs> now. <laughs> No, because if I, if I do that, I haven't done it yet. You've already done it! Yeah, but I haven't done it yet. I gotta go back and do it. Yeah, you wanna unravel it. Oh it's my like God. you're dead. You gotta remember <laughs> yeah, to, to put the garbage can wherever. On top of your dad. What you need to do <laughs> is actually just do everything and then be like, okay, I did it. And get in the, in the time machine and then go there. Yeah. But he's not smart enough to do that. Oh, uh, uh, so, he's like the most brilliant man ever. I know. So so then he enacts... Uh, you missed a step, Lex. Right. So he enacts his scheme... And, and and enlists the rest of the Legion. And the rest. And the rest. And so that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens. That's what happens. So then, like, uh, you know, Superman and Jean, who are manipulated, are, like, reaching these, like, these asteroids that are all leading to the totality. And all you got to do is touch it and you can get it. It's uh, a disco ball. Yeah. It's straight up a disco ball. And they're going for it. And uh, Luther's just like, man, this is great. We're all like, I, and I got Superman. I can just fly over there. And then the window breaks and Batman busts in. And he's like, I got a kryptonite ring. Those antibodies that ate me? Yeah, they're Kryptonian. So my kryptonite ring could totally punch it. And I freed myself. And so now I'm here to fight you. How did you get here? So then Batman and what, Luther you fight. swim through the blood So Batman and Luther fight. <laughs> and he just waited for a few pumps. It, it goes all around. Mm -hmm. He just surf on through it. He just took him a couple tries. <laughs> yeah. But uh, oh, I missed my exit. <laughs> yeah. So Batman uh, basically knocks the like the evil Doom doorknob out of Luther's hand, and Batman's plan is I'm going to take the doorknob and then fix this. Oh, it fell on Superman. Now Superman's a door. Right. Yeah, he is a gateway. <laughs> that would have been actually kind of smart. Uh, so yeah. So oh, so uh, so Batman is going to win. Uh -huh. like, he's beating up Luther. And he's re reaching for the doorknob, and so Luther calls into Joker. So Luther calls to Joker, and Joker manipulates Jean's body so that he reaches into Superman's skull with his Martian powers to dig into Superman's brain to stab Batman. And I don't know how this doesn't cause irreversible brain damage to Superman, but let's not talk about it anymore because that's all that happens. I feel like the Joker needs to learn about boundaries. I feel like <laughs> there's no goddamn way that the Joker is a neurosurgeon. Right? He's just like, oh, no, I no, he's, he's just like, he's it's in here somewhere, I don't know. Batman. Yeah. I could be a neurosurgeon or a bank, <laughs> a safe cracker or a concert pianist. Yeah. Instead, I'm just fun. Yeah. And also I can dig into your brain and not turn Superman into a vegetable. Well, maybe it's because it's, you know, he's Superman. Yeah, yeah. it's self replicating uh, No, I'll heal. Yeah, it's once fun. I get near the sun, my brain will heal. Or it's like really strong. You know, we got this big, like tense sequence where Batman's taking over you know, he's, 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 he's overwhelming Lothar and Kendra has just done the coup d'etat on Joker and you're like, oh man, and they're reaching for the, to, for the doorknob and Luther looks like he might almost get it. And then he does. And that's like, and this is how Scott will write the Justice League book until it ends. Every story will do this. The League will lose, lose hard, feel horrible, then they're going to dig real deep and they're going to find that last resort of hope and they're going to use it, they're going to channel, they're going to build themselves up, they're going to reach for it and they're going to fail. It's like real life. Yeah, where <laughs> just like everything that you believe in, everything that makes you who you are, you just dig deep, deep down and you take it and you, you just turn that into hope and then it's not really important because someone else is in charge and so you're a loser and you failed. And that's, that's lit, and it's just, it's just, Thanks, Scott. And that, by the way, and that's not because Scott Snyder believes in like in, in futility and doom. It's because although it'd be funny, we need thirty nine issues of this because I need to keep it going. So that's they, why they lose. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Batman loses. I know, right? They lose what? What? 
I don't want to read this book anymore. <laughs> Ben's like taking his microphone off. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> no, 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 no. So Luke is like, ha, you lose. And he uses the doorknob uh, and the energy within it to break all of Batman's bones. Breaks his arms and legs. He's like, look at you, lol. And then he uses the doorknob and- Batman's How like, is that a thing? Like, hey, it's a doorknob. Yeah. yeah, no, but it's like an enchanted doorknob of like doom. It, it's, it's, it's powerful. It came to him. So anyway, uh, he teleports Batman out of there and Batman's just like dumped along with Superman and Martian Manhunter. And Batman's like, you think this will stop me? I had my spine broken. I'll just, it's gonna oh, take no. me a little while. Oh no, well, no one else wants to write about that. So Scott Snyder invents a cool Batman mech suit that Batman wears for like the next two issues that heals him really fast. It's like a Kryptonian sleeping coma. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a Kryptonian coffin. It's, it's like moving <laughs> traction. Yeah, it is. It's a walking hospital bed, which is what Alfred calls him in Dark Knight Returns. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, Luther is like, well, I got the totality. I'm good. So he's, he's going to go for it. He, he, he teleports John, Superman, and Batman. This is like the Yzma, like, you know, I'm a kitten and I caught the vial. Yes. <gasps> I, I win. win. <laughs> then he teleports Joker out. And Joker leaves. Oh, okay. And Joker gets to, like, watch as the Earth is absorbed by Umbrax. I mean, like, he doesn't get to see the Earth really get changed, but he but he does get to see... Because the whole point is that, like, once that happens and, like, the Earth descends into Doom, like, you'll see the image of Doom in the sky and you'll know that, like, the Earth is taken. And Barry can't use the Speed Force to use his stupid car because if he uses the Speed Force, it makes him in more ineffectual, right? He, well, he, he, he needs to basically embrace the Still Force and then try and use that. Um... He's the Flash. I know. Well, that's the, the Still Force is his opposite. I How, know. You shouldn't even be able to access it. Nobody. But the Still Force is just an aspect of the Speed Force, or at least they're two sides of the same coin. So, it's like he's Flash, trying to be normal. The trick is, yeah. <laughs> the, the, well, the, the whole point of it is that, like, that Flash needs to learn to slow down. It's a character building sequence. So, Fla so Flash, like, ultimately, you know, goes against his own nature and slows down. Is he gonna use that in the future? Uh, maybe. But, like, right now, he just needs to use it right now, because the Earth is going to die. So, uh, Superman has to fight all of the ultraviolet, like, core members. That's what he's up to. And, uh, what? I just have a really random question for you. Mm -hmm. Because Wonder Woman's on this team. Yeah. And this is an Earth-ending event. Right. Where are the members from Odyssey and Justice League Dark right now? They're probably in the basement. So, aided by Cyborg and the technology of the Watchtower, Jean can, tries to connect with every human being on Earth. Mm-hmm. And basically, kind of like help nudge them towards hope and and, and you know and, and truth. And yeah, it's just, not too bad. So, and and justice, right? Really. And uh, they stick John Stewart Ultraviolet Lantern into the Speed Force car, so that he <laughs> can use the Speed Force and help kind of like protect the Earth. He like pulls a Superman move and he drives the car around the Earth itself to kind of like reach everyone. You know, because he's like, he's oh, got... Is, is he like a conduit for Jean? Yeah. Oh. Kind of. Okay. Because I was going to say, if he's driving that fast, he's probably running a lot of people over. Right. No, no, no. It's like over the earth or something. It's cool. And I like that Superman Day fastball special on him. Yeah. Well, to help like give it a jump start. Yeah. Uh, so as John and Jean and Cyborg are like communicating with the earth... Luther steps up to the totality and uses the doorknob. He's going to, like, use it to open it and enter the totality. But when he looks at the doorknob, it's not working, and the image of Doom has inverted to justice, and so it won't open. And then Kendra leaps in, and he's going to base... She's going to blast his head open with her mace, and uh, that's when the connection of everyone and the belief in hope basically unifies all of humanity and turns the Earth itself into a white lantern. This sucks. <laughs> Every chapter is, is like this. And then this happens. Why? Because There's no precedent for and it. And then this no happens. Fucking sense. Oh! White lantern! Like, they should have used whatever they did to the moon. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you mean foreshadow it? Yeah. They should have made the moon the white lantern and it should have, like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm the boo. It is the boo. <laughs> yeah, that would've been great. It's white anyway. Yeah. Flash enters into the still force and closes the door to it, like seals it away so that it can't like affect the earth. And so he does and it works. And uh, earlier in the story, 
Batman tries to convince Jon Stewart to join the mm -hmm. Justice League. Because John's like, oh, what? You need another soldier? You, the, the world's got plenty of soldiers you can use. He goes, no, 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 no. You were a soldier, yes, but you were also an architect. That's part of John's character, mm -hmm. is he was also an architect. And he's like, you were also an architect, and that's what we need right now. We need someone who can build. And uh, and that's just a fun throwaway line in the beginning of the story. But then, at the end, Sinestro is fighting against John, and John, of course, he is an ultraviolet lantern, and he can never become a Green Lantern again. And Sinestro's like, you fool, you could you could have been a paladin in my in my lantern core. You could have been my, my, my right-hand man, but instead, you'll just be nothing but a foot soldier. He goes, actually, I'm also an architect. And out of fucking nowhere, John Stewart conjures a Green Lantern ring and becomes a Green Lantern again and drops a building made from John's mind on top of Sinestro. That seems a little OP, and I love John Stewart. <laughs> it's because he's using his willpower yes. to overcome his emotions. Yes, that's true. But where does the ring come from? <laughs> well, maybe... Yes, maybe, he builds it out of his willpower. Hang on, hang on. Maybe the ring never actually was destroyed and, like, Right. Maybe Sinestro used like his powers to make him believe that it was. Right. And so like when he was able to break himself away from that and recognize that like, no, I am a Green Lantern. It was like I'm here, and I was always here. Right. Th and that's how it's visually drawn. Is that it, like it just appears? But we also saw it explode. So, but it could be a metaphor. Anyway. So no, the the the, the uh, Guardians were just like, oh, give him a ring. Or give him another ring. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> So Kendra fights Luther and like they're kicking ass. Like she's really, she's really giving him what for. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's like, "Come on, you gotta give me the totality. Just let me have it." <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I I can't use my doorknob. I ignore powers. I'm just, just gonna be whiny. Yeah. So then she. <laughs> like, I had all these so steps. Hard. Yeah. So instead, uh, Kendra takes the totality and Luther gets teleported to Joker. And Joker's like, "Well, better luck next time, huh, Lex?" So. That's when that's when the Joker should shake Luther's hand and be like, it was a good try. And he has a buzzer. Yeah. Man. It's, it doesn't shock him, no, it just buzzes. It just buzzes. <laughs> that would really piss him off. <laughs> so Kendra now has the totality. And she, it's a little disco ball. And the whole Justice League and the Justice League Dark. And like, I think Odyssey wait, too. Wait, they Odyssey, don't get transformed? No. But, she doesn't get well, transformed? No, because the, the, the aura around the totality that was within it, that transformed people. The thing that was around the head. When you went into the head, you could actually go and get, like, the ball. Kirk is really big here. Yeah. That's weird. So, you know, they... Uh, so and they, they send it to Disney because it basically looks like Epcot. Right. And they let the Imagineers handle it. looks exactly it. like the Epcot ball. <laughs> anyway, so they, uh, they, they put it away. And they're like, whoo! That was crazy. I'm sure nothing bad will come from this. Right. And of course it does. And uh, you know, Jean basically indicates to John that like he forgave him for letting Zanji die back in Cosmic Odyssey. <laughs> and John's like, thanks. Now I, I can be a member of the team. I learned a lesson. I forgive you. Oh, thank God. Woo! Good, because it was going to be really awkward if I was going to be on this team and there was any tension. So that's gone. Hey, aren't you still a Green Lantern? Don't you have responsibilities out in space? Nah, there's like a thousand of us. We're good. Nah. I'm the guardian of the sector, and the sector also only has one planet in it that like has people on it. Yeah, that's that's actually important. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Luther's like, well, that sucks. Um, oh, also Scott Snyder retcons in that Starman is back. He says, I have all the answers, but in order to learn them, three of you must die. And you're like, oh no. Is it three jokers? No. <laughs> Not everything is three Jokers. Not everything has to do with the Joker. Anyway, so then uh, Lex Luthor goes to talk to the Jokerized version of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> no, the whole point is that like Luthor's like, okay, so I couldn't do it without you. I need your help. And the Batman who laughs, who is the like prisoner that was in the basement of the Legion of Doom headquarters, is like, yeah, of course you did. Lol. Lol. Literally. Uh, you, you probably don't know who the Batman who laughs is. All right, so we'll do Dark Knight's Metal sometime. Yeah, and he's... he's You're going to love it. Oh yeah, it, I had a problem with this book. I, I I think it's actually a little more straightforward than this. It is. is. No, it is. <laughs> you know it's not. I reread it today and I was like, really? Oh. Like oh, it gets it goes. But for me, okay. So I think I have positive memories of parts of it because the end of it is like whatever. Um, but like there is that part that does spawn off some really interesting stuff in the Justice League book that I dig. Yes. Um, and so like I'm like, oh no, that's great because it's like it's sad what happens, but like it's cool the stories we get out of it. Yes. 
Are we going to rewind and reflect on the fact that the Earth is now a white lantern? Oh, it was only temporarily. It went back to being a regular Earth after the, after the crisis had been averted. What? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you're a white lantern and then, you know, you don't need to be one anymore and it goes away. Justice League The Totality mm. is available in the description below this video. You can pick up a copy of this. It, it, when you're reading it and you're alone and... It, it looks great. It, it does look great. But when you're reading it, it... it, it I don't know if it makes more sense, but like... You're gonna need it because well, this more is, stuff is happening. It all spins out of... It. No. This is just one chapter of many chapters from the totality. No, oh, yeah. And the whole point is that the totality is the thing that I, is the catalyst for the next big thing that Snyder sets up for the Justice League. I remember reading this and like enjoying a little bit of it, but I think for me, my biggest issue was that like in my head, I guess I was like, no, we're going to get, like, the show, like... that's That was the promise. No, the promise publicly yeah. at New York Comic Con was, oh, no, we're getting the 07, it's going to be a lot of fun, John, Jean, Kendra, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, all that stuff. Plus, Snyder remembers the old era. Like, when he had to do the New 52 Batman, he's like, no, my Batman plus New 52 crap. Like, mm -hmm. he, he likes continuity, he read comics, he's gonna reference that stuff and he's gonna, like, cement it in there. And he, and he does. And he does, but, but like, he also has, like, stuff he wants to say and do. At least he's not moralizing. Like, the only, yeah. the only moralizing that happens is, like, bad is bad and good is good. I, everyone can get on board for that. Uh, the whole point of, that Luther learns, or like, that he believes, is that, like, doom is the truth. That, like, the, all the world is meant to be bad and evil. That the true nature of the universe is doom. And that justice is actually, it's an aberration. It's a false god. Right. It, they, they erect it to try and fight doom, but you can't. Yes. The, the justice is the consequence of trying to fight your true nature. And, like, and... That is neat if your main villain believes that. And obviously, at he the does. end of it... Well, I was going to say, at the end of it, obviously, he's wrong. And if he's wrong, then it's like a positive story. And I don't see any reason for him not to believe that or go in that direction. Mm -hmm. But I Particularly because every time that the story ends, they lose and fail. So, like, eventually, just to kind of mix things up a little bit, they have to win. So eventually they do. Yeah. Explain to me why the doorknob suddenly inverts and becomes a justice doorknob instead of a doom doorknob. Well, I guess because everyone on Earth holds hands and sings Kumbaya and proves that, like, their inner nature is not doom. Except, like, when the mother of all creation shows up, she is the consequence of the truth, which is that all of doom is the natural progression of everything. So, like, no. It's so just, it was a lie. Right. It's just like, oh... We have to have him not use the doorknob. We, we need him to not get the totality right away. Maybe maybe he shouldn't have been the first to reach it. Yeah. Maybe, I guess, what the what they're indicating there is that humanity does have, like, a stronger, like, will to them and a stronger power yeah. to them and that, like, you know. Maybe they should be Green Lanterns. Well, yeah, and then at the end of the day, it's like, you know, humanity is always, like, the sore thumb. Right. In, like, you know, world or universe-ending problem it's true well and, and john's reckoned that actually earth is the center of the multiverse anyway so it all kind of comes down to humanity mm. if we had done no justice it would have i think it would have dovetailed a little better because like you would have been prepared for all this bullshit <laughs> Like, ah! Because it's like, oh, no, a big giant guy that represents wisdom is going to fight us. And we got to like, figure out how to get to the tree of wisdom and fight that. Like, he sets it up where it's like, if you are if you jump into this cold, you're going to be like, oh, my God, this is completely off the rails. But no, if you actually get the prelude, See, you'll be like, oh, my God, it's know. always like this. Well, yeah, it is always like that. But, like, I feel like there's, like, more of an impact to, like, the world-ending possibility in this if you haven't been on the, like, Snyder since, train of, like, this. Because Dark it's, Knight. like, yeah. it's always ending. And I get it. They're the Justice well, League. So, like, you know, it's difficult to try to come up with, like, issues for them to deal with because it's, like, you have these superpower beings mm -hmm. together. But it's, like... if. If Grodd had used the Still Force to destroy Barry Allen and the entire plot, or the, at least the emotional core of the story, was the Lee being like, we're not fast enough or slow enough or powerful enough to stop this and our friend is going to die, that is enough mm -hmm. for us to be invested in a Justice League story. Yeah, but like, once again, 
We're killing Barry. Oh, no. But, like, well, one, good. Two, <laughs> th no, because it's he's a member of the League. But three, that would be enough. It doesn't have to be that the Earth is in peril or the universe is going to end. It, it can just be that, like, your comrade is in trouble. It, it doesn't, like, if... I figured it'd be a Jean story. Yeah, yeah, and... <laughs> a genre. <gasps> yeah, and ah. it, it, it is, by the way. It's all about Jean. Jean is the emotional core of the story. Yeah. Uh, you, you keep checking back in with Jean, and you find out, like, oh, it turns out that, like, when Jean was teleported off of Mars when he was a kid, it was through the machinations of Luther's father, and so Luther's father kept Jean a prisoner, and young Lex Luthor, who was the same age Had as Jean, hand that up. was him. Yeah, so I Jean see. and Lex were friends. That was the question I was going to ask. Yes. And I was like, does that happen in they this? They allude to it in this. And I'm you like, see it. And but I'm like, I look through it, and I'm like, did, did did Lex Luthor meet Jean when he was little? Yes. Maybe I made that no, up. they were friends. Okay, but I didn't want to give anything away. Yeah, yeah no, so, who cares? Okay. We're not doing volume two. All right. So, like, <laughs> but, but yeah, no, Jean and Luthor are friends, and, like, they kind of, not that they grew up together, but they, they were the only, they were the only playmates each of them had ever in their childhood. Yes, that's exactly what Next I remember Next back issues, volume two. Yes. <laughs> So, Damn it! <laughs> so, so Luther actually has a little bit of like a soft spot for Jean and like invites him to join him. Yeah. Where he's like, listen, like you know as well as I do that, that my like, dad sucks. That my dad sucks, and like the world kind of sucks, and that like humanity is garbage, and let's let's team up. Like, just come with me. He's like, and also you must know that like it's all leading to doom. Look what happened to your people. Right. Like your wife and kid burned to death in front of you. You you get it. Yeah. You you're the one of the few people who should get it. Also, uh, Luther fires Joker. Yeah, I remember that. Because Joker's not a team player. Jo I think Joker, it's great actually, they try to get rid of Joker. Joker's like, fire me, will you? <laughs> and he destroys everything. He's just like, I got this. And then he leaves. He's like, nice right. try. He, he basically proves- he You can't fire me, he, I quit. <laughs> he does like a Tower of Babel, but inversed. And where, you know, because it's Joker. Yeah. And he basically shows all of them like, I could have killed all of them. Don't ever cross me or call me again. And you're like, thank you. Like, why would Joker join this? Yeah. And I love that. The Joker is like as dangerous to them as Batman is to the Justice League. Right, but again, which is why, like, why would Luther ever think he could control this? And I don't think he did. I think it was more like I pointed Joker in that direction because okay. I stuck him in Jean. He's not going to be as distracted or interested. He's going to only have one focus of a... If he's going to kill a person, there's only one person in the body, so it's going to be Kendra, so he'll go for her. I sent out the invitation. I didn't think he'd RSVP yes. Yeah. And he did. We've all and been there. So it's like... <laughs> Here, here's a thing for you to do. We've all been there. This person's a no-show. They're a, they're a party pooper. I gotta send them the invite, but there's a good 90% chance they're gonna say no. Yeah. Send an invitation, That's why RSVP we... plus one. Yeah, no! I, That's I guess... why we barely saw Black Manta the entire book. <laughs> Black Manta was originally gonna be inside Jean's body. Yeah. And when Joker said yes, he's like, dude, you gotta get the fuck out of here. You gotta, you gotta take this one for me, man. <laughs> You gotta do the underwater thing. Well, because I guess it's like the, the other side of that would be I didn't invite him, and then he finds out that I formed a Legion of Doom. Yeah. And he comes here anyway. Right. So, so I'm like, oh, you didn't invite which me. Which they did in Infinite Crisis, by the way. <laughs> there yeah. was already a thing okay, in Infinite yeah. Crisis where, uh, where Alexander Luther didn't call Joker, and Joker's like, don't call me, will you? And he kills him in an alley. <laughs> Luther and Lex Luthor's like that's their that's your problem, man. You didn't call the Joker. You gotta you gotta always have a plan for the Joker because he hates not being invited. But then you do invite him, and then you're like, I don't want to have him here anymore. Anyway. Oh no, you don't want him at your party, but you also daren't in disinvite him. <laughs> oh God, do I watch his car? Or do I not watch his car? Yeah, we've done that. We know what it's all about. Joker's a walking contradiction conundrum. Yeah, I do like these images of, of Cheetah. Right. With her ears back. Like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next week. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. So long. Whoo. <laughs> Wait, did you invite the Joker to this episode? <laughs> That's it. I'm out of here. Yeah.